folks, welcome to Calvin's Got Game. I'm Calvin. I'm Kelly. I'm Josh. Today we're going to give you 15 games we think would make great stocking stuffers. So we, we all picked uh, five games each, so that's going to total to 15. Hopefully you'll find something for the gamer in your life to check it out. So who would like to go first? I'll go first, sure. All right, I mean, go ahead. You know. All right, so this is no particular order or anything. No. It's just five games we think would make great stocking stuffers for your loved one or whoever. Um, so my first one is Ink and Gold, which is a game we just recently played. I think it's also, I think it's Diamant now, right? Diamant, yeah. Which is, a, it's a little uh, pressure luck game. You're all going into this, I guess, cave. Temple. Temple. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to get the most treasure, and you're trying to stay in there as long as possible, and there's different, uh, I guess, booby traps or whatever that come out, monsters or zombies, spiders. Ball, uh, rock slides. Rock slides. And fire. Yeah. Once uh, two of the same booby trap comes out, then if you're still in the temple, then you lose all your gold or you lose all your treasure. But if you come out before then, you get whatever treasure uh, you have with you. So you get to put it in your tent. You get to put it in your tent. Um, it's a fun little pressure luck game. It's, it's, uh, oh, I, I yeah. like it. Yeah. And it's a hit at every, every time I bring it out, people love it. And they want to play it multiple times. And of course, um, it has different values as well. So when you go into the temple, you can pull a, out one gem um, on the card, and then there will be 15 you can get, and different uh, various amounts. And without fail, you'll always go out, and then the next card will be just the beautiful 15 uh, yes. gems. So. And they have to divide equally. So if you have three people playing and there's 17, a card with 17 gems comes out, each person will get five, five gems mm -hmm. and then two will go, two on, the go on the card. So whoever leaves early, that's an incentive to get out before the next trap, booby trap, whatever you call it, comes up. Danger. Yes. Comes up. Great game. Love it. Booby traps. Booby traps. <laughs> Same booby trap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I guess my first game is really just a series. A lot of my games are. Um, and it's the Exit series. Um, they're just 15, 30 minute games, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, it's really just one scenario and you go through, you can do it alone or you can do it with a family or friends, but it's more fun with a group. And you just go and try to discover the mystery. They've got different cards, um, all numbered, and you just pull them out when uh, the different cards say what to do. And you're just trying to work through different puzzles and different situations. Um, I think they have what a betrayal game, a uh, betrayal style one. Yeah, I, I yeah. think they do. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that I've played, and I really enjoyed it. It had a spooky kind of Halloween vibe, um, but they have plenty of games, and they're just always so much fun. So, do you like the Exit series better than the Unlock? I don't think I've played Unlock, but they're they're similar, and I think they're well, the same kind of. Style. The only difference between Unlock and Exit is once you play an Exit game, you can never play right. it. Yeah. yeah. Unlock, you can give it to someone else. And they can play it, mm -hmm. you know, through that. You don't cut anything or tear anything. Yes. I know those exit series, you're cutting up stuff or tearing up stuff or folding things. Yeah. So, not that they're bad games. I think they're that's a fine yeah. pick. I like it a lot. So, if you know somebody who likes puzzly games, that's it for them. Exit or unlock. Yeah. You got anything to say about exit? No. I'm you never even. played it? I've, I've played it. I just, it's been a while. I mean, I like those type of games. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a yeah. one shot. Well, I've got an unlock game, and I'll let you borrow it, because uh, you can check it out. The one that Erica borrowed, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There you go, Erica. <laughs> That's right. There you go, Erica. <laughs> You're in. All right. So my uh, pick is the Shipwreck Arcana. The Shipwreck Arcana is a game where you have these tile, number tiles, um, and you try and you get to draw two out of the bag. You have to keep one. you got some cards out there that talk about... If your tile is, I don't know, if it totals a certain number or it's lower than a certain number, you put that tile under there. And what they're trying to do is your teammates are trying to guess what tile you have left in your hand before this track runs out. Um, so, and we have to guess everybody. Everybody's yes. going to do that. So we're looking at everybody's card or everybody's tile out there and the formula on the card tells you kind of reasoning what you can deduct from the others. It's just a very fun game. It's very hard to explain, but I think if you got it to the table for somebody who likes puzzly it's games, puzzle yes. game, yeah. um, and it's a deduction, deduction game. game, you know, I think that's a great stocking stuffer. I love this game. I'm a very big fan of the logical uh, deduction games, 
and they have the five different cards laid out. And I remember one time we were playing and um, they had, we had like, put your highest number here, put your lowest number here. Mm -hmm. uh, if your number is an even number, put it here. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had put my number out and with these two just guessing, um, they were able to narrow it down to the one number because the number I had was like uh, four or something and they were able to puzzle out, well, she didn't put it here, she didn't put here. So the reason why she put it here was because it had to be number four. Mm -hmm. So it's just moments that, like that that make it a really fun and interesting game to play. It is fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. I almost put it on my list. Josh, your next one. Uh, my next one is... A two-player game called Jad Core. I don't mm -hmm. know if y'all played it or no, not. I played with you. Oh, right. That's yeah. right. Me and Kelly played it. Um, Left out again. <laughs> it's, only two, it's only two players. <laughs> but uh, it's um, it's a really fun game. It's like a set collecting game. There's different... Mm -hmm. You've got silk, spices, gold. There are different cards that you have a market on in the front of the table. And you have a hand of cards. And you can either take uh, goods from the market or you can exchange... Mm. from your hand and you uh, can like sell it off you can sell it off and you once you get like three three of a kind you can sell it off and get a three of a kind chip or you can mm -hmm. try and get five of a kind four of a kind and get the higher point chips and um mm -hmm. it's best two out of three you play three rounds best two out of three and it's a it's a really fun really fun game yeah, yeah I, I enjoyed it a lot they're also like these camel cards so if you have the most camels at the end of the round you get like a extra five points for it. And then and so, Kelly went for the camera. Oh yeah, Kelly went for the camera. It was so much fun. So. I, I, I saw that coming a mile away when she said, and you get those camels. Yeah. Well, your opening hand, you know, you get you get dealt cards out. And yeah. then if you have any camels in your opening hand, you, that's, your, that's your herd of camels. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's laid out so you can see. And if you're planning ahead, you can say, oh, well, Josh took a camel this turn, so I should take two so I can be ahead. Mm. Okay. Right. And so there's camels in the market too, and you can take all the camels, mm -hmm. or you can just take a good or whatever. Ah. So. Mm. And the only value the camels serve is just that extra five point token, but um, it can make a difference. It does make a difference. Nice. All right, Kelly. All right. Um, my next game is just the Exploding Kitten series. So there are several different games in this kind of series. They have plenty online like uh, Unstable Unicorns, Exploding Kittens. They have little expansion packs for them now. Um, and they're just really fun games for the whole family. Um, the Exploding Kitten series and the Exploding Kittens in particular is really fun for younger audiences as well. I played this with um, some kids I babysat and they loved it. Um, I think the youngest was like four or five and uh, they got really into it. You just kind of have to walk them through the cards they have uh, Unstable Unicorns as well, which is really meant for an older audience, like 14 plus because the cards get kind of detailed, but uh, we also played with it as like a matching kind of game where I just laid out the unicorns because they're just really pretty art cards, really fun, and just they fit well in a stocking. I like the uh, all the different types of cats and exploding kittens. Yes. Yeah, I think they're really cool. The taco cat's probably taco my favorite. Cat, yeah, the taco cat. cat. Uh, yeah. They have like a hairy cat, a watermelon cat. Just yeah. I Very think fun. the taco cat's my favorite, though. <laughs> All right. Well, I must point out that, you know, in the center of the video is Kelly. She's wearing a wonderful Calvin's Got Games t-shirt. <laughs> uh, so my second game that I'm going to pick here is for that solo gamer. If you know somebody who likes to play games by themselves, uh, or somebody you know that just likes to, you know, go off by themselves and play a game, um, Hostage Negotiator. Hostage Negotiator is a great game and you can pick that game up at our favorite game store three sons unlimited you can go check it out there uh they also have the little expansion packs that come with it or, or that you can buy separately to go with it so and they have the big box too but anyway hostage negotiator you have these themes that you have to talk a, ho a, a, a person who or a kidnapper whatever he is took these hostages um it could be a dad who took the a uh, hospital hostage to get their kid surgery, mm -hmm. you know, and couldn't afford it. Or a school teacher that just, you know, uh, class was just too much that day. <laughs> um, but they're all in there, and you have to use your skills, and you can buy other skills. So it's kind of a deck-building game as well. And it's a little bit lucky because you have to roll dice 
but the game is fabulous. I enjoy playing it by myself a lot. So, Hosh is negotiating. All right. My next game is Artifacts, Inc., which me and Calvin have played before. Yeah, I think right. it plays two to four. It's uh, from Red Raven, Ga- Red Raven Games, and you're kind of, you're rolling dice, you're kind of like an explorer, and it's, it's all card and uh, dice driven. You're rolling dice, and you're, you're placing dice to do certain actions, and then you'll buy artifacts, and you're trying to mm-hmm. get the most gold or points. I forget which one it is. But... I think I won it. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. I, actually, I think you did. Because, I did. Yeah. Because you just started getting on a roll. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it was a, it's a great game. I really like it. Of course, game. it's always pretty red red. It's really it's good with two players. It's I played it with three. It's good with three. But I think it plays two to four. Uh, and red, red Ravens art. Uh, I love them. Yes. Uh, the art yeah. style. Love them below. Uh, near and far. Uh, Mega Land, I think, was one. Mm-hmm. They just have really nice art. Isle Bound. Isle Bound, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> Not Kelly's and, uh, favorite, but... Yeah, I'm not a fan, but... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they, they do make but, some nice games. Yeah, so that's a, it's a fun... It's a fun... It's a dice roll or something different. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right. So I guess my next game is uh, Uno. And I love this game. I play this all the time with my family. It's the one game they always want to play. Um, you can buy it at most any store. Uh, you can get different themes. I think my brother has the Avengers-themed Uno game. So it just adds a little bit of twist, a little twist onto the game. And, you know, it's just that classic game that you can just put in a stocking and everyone loves to play it. And not to mention it's inexpensive. Inexpensive as well, I mean, it's yes. It's like four or five bucks at you mm-hmm. know, Walmart, yeah. Target, Game Store, wherever you go. Exactly. Um it is. It's a classic, like you say. In families, you get around the table, and you always get those. Yeah, you will have some wine, and if you get some kids, and they get a draw four plate on them, but <laughs> they got to learn sometimes. Yeah, it's exactly. always not fun, you know, to to get that plate on them. So, fabulous game. Like it. Anybody else comment? All right, it's so Uno. Uh, it's Uno. It's it Uno. Is. It's it's the number it's one, one of your all time classic games that you've yes. played. So. Well, my number three was kind of new to me, but I really enjoyed it, and it's called Oh My Goods, and this one would probably be more for a medium weight mm-hmm. person gamer, uh, because the cards serve three purposes. They, yes. they are they are either goods, um, buildings, mm-hmm. or what's the other one? Uh, There's something else. Anyway, they, they do something else. Oh, you can use them as uh, resources. Right, right. Okay. So you can use them as resources, they're money, um, and then you can buy them as a building. So the cards serve three purposes, and all you're trying to do is build some buildings, but you're going to flip over cards in a market until you get two half suns, and then the day's over for the morning market. You'll do an evening market. You'll do some things in between. You'll sign some workers, and you can sign a, a good worker, right. or it can be a lazy worker. You're trying then, to complete your factory or yeah. you, know, you want it to activate. You, right. know, you need the resources from the market or from your hand to yeah. activate those factories. And everybody can use buildings. the resources in the market. Yeah. And you can use them multiple times to activate different things. So it, it's just a wonderful game. I really enjoyed it. I'm sad it took me so long to get to it. But uh, it's out there. You can find it. It's a very small box mm-hmm. game. It's just a deck of cards and it's just awesome. Yeah, and sometimes the market will be really big because you oh. it'll take forever to get two suns, or sometimes it'll be sun card sun, and you'll be like, oh. Well. Or you'll turn up a sun and another sun. Yeah. It's over yeah. um, for that morning market, and you have to wait till the evening market to hope you're going to get something to help you build <laughs> what you need. So that's a it's a really good game. It, it really is a yeah. lot lot in that little bitty box. Yes. Yes. Uh, my next pick is a game I actually haven't played yet, but I own it. Uh, it's Keyforge. Which is a it's a deck builder. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a deck building series almost. Yeah, yeah. So every you can go to the store and just buy a single deck, and it's complete deck ready to play out of the box. I think it's like ten bucks a pack, and uh, you buy two and you can play a two player game. But each deck is completely different. There's no two decks that are the same, which is the key point of the or one of the key selling points of the game. And it's it's a cool two player game, and you're trying to each deck is made up of three different factions and they all have their own unique cards I mean there's some cards that are the same but no two decks have the same exact deck list um, they have di- different abilities which yes. you know, each deck has its own special mm, niche yeah. and it's a, it's, a, it's I mean it's a cool game that I think 
you know, you can go and just buy two decks and boom, there you go, you're playing the game. Mm -hmm. I think I played it once. You played it once? I think I played it once. I don't really remember it that well, but I know I played it once. I think I played it with uh, Christine at the game store. You're trying to be the first one to forge three keys, which is Key Forge. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's where the name comes from, I guess. Um, but yeah, each each round you, you pick one of your three factions to, and you can only play cards from that faction on that turn. Okay. Uh, or they only activate on I don't, I, I don't remember this game that well. But I think because it's not like Magic where you can spend a lot of money, build a great yes. deck, you get these pre-made decks and that's what you yeah, use. You got to use the strategy uh, to use that deck wisely. Mm -hmm. Alright, so if you like card games, you like, you know, like Magic or Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. or whatever like that, this is a pre-made deck. You don't have to collect cards. You just go and buy a pack. You have a whole deck you can play. Yes. No LCG. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. That's a good one. All right. So I guess my next game, it's kind of for a larger stocking, but I think it's just going to be so <laughs> funny to put into a stocking. It's Secret Hitler. Um, it's a long, thin game, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's made some of my uh, top 10 lists, I think. Um, but it's just one of those games you get out and you play with your family or you play with your friends and it's just so replayable. Um, you know, it's the, um, hidden role kind of game where you're just trying to guess who, um, the different people are and you're trying to strategize and you're just trying to win whether you're, um, the liberal or the fascist. So I think it's also, it's another one of them deduction games, trying to figure out yes. who people are, who's on your side, who's not. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful game. Yeah, we enjoy game. playing yeah. it all the time. So And it plays anywhere. I think it plays... It either plays starting at 4 or 5, and then it goes all the way up to 10 people. Yeah. So you can play it with a large group as well, which is something that I, I kind of enjoy, just the, the various levels of play. It is good. Yeah, yeah. and it plays a lot. It plays a small amount. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's a fun game. Mm -hmm. Except when you're... Have to be the Hitler character, and you know sometimes you'll get the two the same, and you have to put out a bad one. You know, yeah. everyone yeah. thinks, oh, oh yeah, they're bad. There's a lot of them great games like that. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, my next game is uh, there's two of them kind of in this series, and I think Josh had mentioned one earlier before we started taping. Um, I I picked Tides of Madness. They also have uh, Tides Tides of, of Time. Tides of Time. I prefer the Tides of Madness because of the Cthulhu, Cthulhu theme. theme. I'm I love Cthulhu. If you put slap Cthulhu on it, I'm buying it. Yeah. So uh, I enjoy it. You're trying not to go mad. You're trying to kind of set collect certain things to score mm -hmm. points each round, and then you get to keep one card from round to round. Mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, but it's only a two player it's game. It's a two player drafting game. It, it's a two player drafting game because you're gonna pick a card, you're gonna pass a card, you're gonna pick a card, and you'll pass them back and forth until you get what your your five cards or whatever it is. I enjoy the game a lot. Um, I don't play it as often as I'd like, but I enjoy the game a lot. Tides of Madness. If you like somebody who likes card drafting, set collection, um, going insane with uh, Cthulhu Madness, they'll love this game. <laughs> yeah, Tides of Time, I think, is a easier version if you want to get that. So basically the same game, just never played. Less, a, I never played Tides and... of uh, Time. So okay. I just When, I, when played, I saw Tides of Madness, I was like, that's the one for me. All right, last one. Here we my go. last game on the list is one of my favorite games, and it is The Crew. Um, this is a cooperative uh, trick-taking game, and it's kind of like uh, you have 50 missions, and you're, you're a crew in space going to look for Planet Nine. Um, and it's uh, yeah, each mission is different. You're gonna you're trying to uh, you know take tricks in a certain order. Sometimes you'll have you'll have uh, different missions which are the tiny cards and you'll have to collect you know this person needs to paint three this person needs the blue four and I have to win the trick with the uh, the yellow nine and it's uh, it's just fun because each mm -hmm. each time is different someone's the captain mm -hmm. someone different's the captain each round and uh, captain of this vessel mm -hmm. um, yes and uh, yeah it's a lot of fun it's just a, it, it is such a great game, but you have to have the right group to play it with. As we found out from Calvin, we have to have the right group, yes. Over, it plays up to four. Over Thanksgiving, five. I played it with uh, family, family, and uh, it just, 
uh, I know they know about trick taking games. They played them before, but it just blew their mind. I don't know what it was, but they just couldn't get the concept of, okay, I have to catch this trick and or this card. But yet they would throw it out when I had the deal, and I'm like, no, you have to catch that. Yes. I'm not the one. So it was a little confusing. But I think if people understand trick taking and they played mm-hmm. spades, hearts, whatever before. It it's not trying to catch a bunch of tricks. You're trying to catch certain ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think this game has honestly ruined trick-taking games for me just because it's so much fun. I've never played a cooperative trick-taking game before, and it's you're all working together instead of competing. So you're really trying to strategize. You're trying to figure out, um, does Josh have the nine? Because um, I have the eight, and he needs to take this blue card. So um, you're just really trying to think ahead, plan ahead, and work out the strategies the other two players are doing. And I think we've hit, what, mission 43, something like that, yeah. out of 50. Yeah. So it's we've, we've played it a lot. So we really, really enjoy this game. It's Yeah, it's a lot of fun when, you know, everyone's like, oh, we, there's no way we can complete these missions. Yes. And you're like, no, we got this, we got it takes this. a good captain yeah. to lead this vessel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll oh, accept that. Thank you. All right. Well, Kelly, what's your next one? Um, my last game is uh, One Night Werewolf. It's another game my family really enjoys playing. Um, I think it plays three to five people, and one person generally is the werewolf, and you're just trying to figure out at the end of the night who the werewolf is, and you just vote him out. And what's great about this game is it only takes five to ten minutes. And that was something that my parents really enjoyed. It's a five to ten minute game. If they don't like it, they don't have to play it after five minutes. Um, And they got really into it because they started working out, um, oh, I'm the werewolf, but I have to say that I'm the seer who can just look at the cards in the middle and say, oh, there's no werewolves in this town because you've got some cards in the middle that stay hidden. So you can have a game where, you know, there aren't a were there isn't a werewolf in the group. And in that case, you wouldn't end up voting for anyone. But Super fun. There are lots of little different rules. Uh, we play a simplified version where you just have a couple villagers, you've got a seer, and then you've got someone who like rearranges the cards along with the werewolf. But they've got various people as well. Um, I think they've got like a drunkard you can put in. They've got, yeah, like a troubadour or something. And it just changes up the game. Uh, so if you, <laughs> if you have a different, like more advanced group that wants to play with the various roles, you can, or you can just throw in the villagers as well. I played uh, Ultimate. I played Ultimate too. I haven't played it. Yeah, just a regular. But I enjoy it. I think it's fun. You got to play with people that'll play it right, though, or mm-hmm. it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It's always about the game group, folks. It's always about yes. who you have to play with that makes the difference. So, yeah, I, I do like that pick. It's a good one. Well, my last one is a game called Get Bit. And I have the Deluxe Edition, it comes in a 10. Um, the, the other one's just in a regular little box, but it's a small little tin that'll fit in the stocking. And in Get Bit, all you're trying to do is outswim a shark. You don't want to be the guy that's in front of the shark because you're going to lose an arm, a leg, or something. And once you lose all your arms and legs, you're out of the game. I mean, you're so, dead. You know. <laughs> well, you're out of the game at the moment. Uh, so, uh, you want to make sure that you're not the last person in front of the shark. So, how it goes is everybody has the same set of cards. Mm-hmm. And everybody's going to put one face down on the table. And if you reveal your card, the highest number swims first because they swim in faster than anybody else. Mm-hmm. So they move up in the row that many spaces. But then the next card moves up in that same order. So if two people pick the same number card, they don't move. Oh. So you're stuck. So you're hoping somebody don't pick the same number you do. So it's a game of just trying not to get bit. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it is it is that very funny. So fun, yeah. It is fun, um, and it plays with younger kids. They get it. They understand mm-hmm. the game, um, and they love pulling off the arms and the legs because you actually pull them off your character. They have little <laughs> oh, looks wow. like little uh, I want to say Lego, but they're not Lego. But they kind of snap together the arms and the head snaps on the legs. So um, it's just a fun game. Mm-hmm. I almost brought it today. Uh, we're gonna play some games later, but almost brought it today, but I did. But mm-hmm. that's my uh, last pick was Get Bit. Um, guys, that's 15 games I hope that you found that might be interesting to you to, to play, uh, to give to somebody on Christmas for a stocking stuffer. 
Um, I want to say this may be the last video that Josh is in with us. I don't know. I hope not. But he's going to be moving off. So our game group is shrinking yet again. Yes. Um, we've already had two that disappeared on us. Uh, we still see them from time to time. That's uh, Kyle and Erica. Uh, we miss them. Uh, we, we miss spending time with them during this pandemic as well. Mm -hmm. It's been kind of rough. But uh, we, uh, we're we going to miss Josh. And we appreciate him. And I'm thankful for him hanging out and doing the videos mm -hmm. with us. I do appreciate it. I also want to give a shout out to Board Game Grand and Lewis. You know who you are. Thanks for being a fan. Guys, thanks for watching Calvin's Got Game. Remember, get a board game to the table. Spend time with friends and family. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe and click that bell for alerts when new videos come out.